What's going on YouTube? This is Nate Tries to Trade. Since I started vlogging, I am finally green on a day, which didn't used to be a rare occurrence for me. But let me go ahead and break this down so I can clear my thoughts, why I chose to take this trade, and kind of the strategy behind it. I sat on my hands for about 40 minutes. I started looking about 50 minutes actually. So the problem that I have been having before, not having a clear entry set up. You know, there was something I was doing before that I'm about to break down now that really helped me take a lot less trades. When I'm just looking at regular candlesticks, I get so, so many false entry signals and it wasn't working out for me. And if you're curious as to why, I have uh, three other vlogs where I have consistently lost money in. Yes, on yesterday's vlog, I said that this was something that I was gonna go back to doing and just being more careful with my entries. Obviously, this isn't my brainchild. This is Juvier, Juvier's Gems. I'm not exactly sure how to say his name, so I really apologize if I'm messing that up. His strategy is, if we're above the VWAP, we take longs. That was really it. I was doing that and it did work a lot, but you know, if... <laughs> what is that? <laughs> and it wasn't really uh, working for me for obvious reasons, because without looking at market structure itself and just blindly going long because you see a flat bottom candlestick above the VWAP doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I'm gonna go back to the entry model that he kind of lays out, but I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. Uh, if the market structure makes sense, then I'll make the trade. If it doesn't, then I'm not going to. To kind of break down on what I saw and kind of what my thought process was, when I started looking at the charts, this is where we were at. At 7.30, we had a huge pop, and then it kind of just chopped around in this area. And I wasn't really super interested in it because this was a 30 point range, essentially. So I was really waiting for a breakdown. We see this big candlestick here. I actually thought about putting a trade on here, but being that, you know, the last couple days we've been seeing a lot of VWAP bounces, I decided that it probably wasn't the best idea. So my next game plan was to wait for it to push below VWAP, uh, maybe get a little bit of a retracement back up to VWAP, and then maybe another push down, look for a flat bottom candlestick at a two to one ratio. Obviously that didn't happen. Uh, we pushed back above VWAP uh, in a fairly strong uptrend, and uh, I saw this little pullback here, and I was like, okay, so now, uh, you know, maybe looking for a flat bottom candlestick out of this little range would be a good entry. So we actually got it. I was looking at this candlestick here, flat bottom pushed out of the range. So I was gonna put my entry here. Uh, I got in on it a little bit late, but my entry was here. What I'm gonna be doing is going for a one-to-one, -one, taking half off, and then moving my stop to break even and letting the other two contracts run. So I'm trading with five contracts right now. Letting the other two contracts want, run to a one to two risk to reward ratio. So what that means, we're gonna have about a 1.75 risk to reward ratio overall. But uh, you know, my, my winning trades are gonna be uh, a lot more frequent, I think, than losing. Taking a little bit of profit at the one to one is something that I, am really comfortable with you know getting some getting some money on the board that way whenever the stop whenever if it does come back to break even when it does you know it's not that big of a deal and emotionally i don't get too invested in getting hit on break even so that's exactly what i did got in on this candlestick put my stop here below the body of it and then i just waited for it to hit my one-to-one -one. And then obviously it came back down and stopped me out at pretty much break even. But obviously, you know, it did continue to push. Here's the thing, you know, if you look at the, if you look at this, if you look at the five minute, my one to two is right on that wick for the morning high. So if that's acting as an area of resistance, you know, I wasn't planning on, uh, you know, not moving my stop to break even. I, that's just my plan and I stuck with it. I took one trade. Now, obviously, you know, there is a lot more opportunities to go. I don't really, the thing about me is I start gambling when I'm down and I know that, and that's something that I'm working on. That's why I'm making these videos so I can hold myself accountable. If I take a green trade 
and it's good. I'm fine with walking away. I don't need to make more because I went green to red and it sucks. And less is more in the market. <laughs> but when I'm down, getting from uh, red to green becomes the goal. So then you start over leveraging, making stupid trades, just trying to get back to where you were at before. Again, I'm on demo, I'm not using real money, but this is something that I need to get down in demo. I know when I switch to live money, the emotions are gonna be a lot more heightened. I need to be able to figure it out on, because whenever I do take a loss, I see it as a failure. And with the way that I was trading before, I really felt that way uh, because a lot of it was discretionary. Switching to something that is a little bit more mechanical, but I can still use my best discretion. So that's kind of what uh, the plan was. That and, that and this is what I'm going to be sticking to, uh, even if I even even if I get ten trades in a row that end up going to break even, it's completely fine with me. At least I get the one to one. But getting the one to two risk to reward ratio, it, it's a pretty common thing. I mean, it happened here. It, it's gonna happen here. It might even happen uh, up here. So it's like, it's not like a super big, it's not an unrealistic thing. For more than a one to two, your 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 ratio is gonna be a lot lower, but my plan is just sticking with the trend, you know? Sticking with the trend and essentially what this is, is trading pullbacks with a strong confirmation. You know, I'm still gonna be looking at break and retests on VWAP, I'm still gonna be looking at continuations to the downside, as long as it looks right. Because we all know whenever we make a trade, if it's a good trade or a bad trade. So my goal is to get out of making that bad trade and these Heiken Ashi candlesticks help. Because you're not, because the entry model requires you to not get in on wiki price action or price action that doesn't have any follow through. Like I was able to sit on my hands for 50 minutes and not do anything, which is something that I really struggled with before. So I'm gonna switch back to this. Like I said, I was doing it before and I had a week where I was losing, but it's because I wasn't looking at the market structure. So when I stopped looking at the, uh, when I stopped using this and I switched back to just market structure only, my trades were a lot more frequent, but I was still winning. It's like it's like the spinning the plates meme when, when one plate stops spinning or might fall off, you have to spin it again. That's kind of what's going on. You know, I'm, I, I was losing my edge because I was trading so much and I need a way to restrict myself. Yep, that's my goal. This is what I'm gonna continue to keep doing and hopefully my road to profitability is is going to start skyrocketing here now obviously i know i'm going to have losing trades but it is what it is anyway to look back on the day um i took uh one i know it says two but it's because i had two different bracket orders for one trade but it was actually one trade not two gross p l 575 total p l 546 and obviously it was one green trade i'm walking away <laughs> on the week, however, uh, we're still down about $5,300. And it just is what it is. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And eventually this is going to, this is going to end up going back up. And I just have to stick, stick with the entry model and not let myself get tilted on days that I lose and just make quality trades. And, but patience for me is the biggest problem. Patience, patience, patience. And I'm sure that's what's keeping most people from being profitable traders is being able to sit out of a trade and just let it, just let the market do its thing and sit on your hands. And if I don't see anything early in the morning between uh, nine and 10, you know, maybe wait for power hour. Strategy generally works during power hour because the moves are a lot more flowy, but sometimes getting a direction can be hard, which is something that you definitely need. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, hope you guys have a great uh, Wednesday and uh, stay awesome. And if you're not profitable, most people aren't. You only lose if you don't stick with it. So have a great day. Bye.